Hey everyone, very good evening and uh, welcome to this session where I'm going to talk about all those things that you must know in uh, the topics of from the anatomy. So we have uh, covered the upper limb, we have covered, I hope by now you know the you know, the topics that you are supposed to know from the upper limb section and then we did the thorax on the other day and we also covered the head and neck region, right? So these are the things that we covered. And then today we are going to talk about the abdomen. So abdomen is today and tomorrow will be the lower limb. So with this, we will be, you know, discussing all the topics that, you know, you must know as a student. If you if someone asks you what is important from this section, you should be able to pinpoint and say, these are the things I have studied and I'm expecting something from this section. So this is um, abdomen and I'm myself, Dr. Rini, and uh, you are welcome to Unacademy. I'm an educator at uh, Unacademy for the subject anatomy. All right, so let's see um, if you all are able to connect and uh, if there is any questions or queries, you, know, you can post directly while you're watching the video. All right. Let me also try and connect with you real quick so that we don't waste much time. <clears throat> All right. So, hi, Murli. And so there we have the topics. All right, so here. Okay, so first one, gastrocysis. So here there is a question on this one and omphalocele. So these two, there is a difference between these two. Now, which one is covered with the sac, which one is not covered with the sac, all that we can discuss when it comes to these two. So we can make it as versus. So this versus that. All right. So then there is Meckel's anomaly. So Meckel's diverticulum, all the, you know, rule of two, you can recall and we'll discuss this Meckel's diverticulum. Then you have to know about the relations of the lesser sac. Relations of the greater and the lesser sac, you know, greater sac, lesser sac, and the connection between those two is by the epiploic foramen. So, epiploic foramen. It's very, very important. All right. And so is the greater omentum and lesser omentum. Greater omentum and lesser omentum. Right. So that is also equally important. Let's see what we have now. So first we have the difference or the versus, this versus that. Omphalocele and gastrocysis. So we have the features that first one I can say that it is the site of defect. What is the site of defect? So here omphalocele is central umbilical. All right. While the gastrocysis is right para umbilical. It is para umbilical. And you must remember it is not in the center. <clears throat> and this one is present, always present with the sac. The omphalo seal is always present with the sac. And this has no sac. All right. Next, anomalies of rotation and fixation are present in both of them. And next one, you can also say gender, which one is more, you know, has the affinity for females. So it is more in case of females when it comes to omphalocele and gastrocesis is equal. So it is both seen in male and females. Next one, it is associated with which anomaly? So this one is very frequent. It is associated with also heart anomalies. So this is the key thing that will give you some hint. Okay, whether it is an omphalocele and gastrocesis in case you are, you know, a little confused. And this one is rarely there is any heart anomaly associated with this. And any intestinal atresium, this is very, very rare. In this case, it is, you know, here itself, it says it is up to 10%. You can see intestinal atresium. 
All right, so this is how it looks. <clears throat> the gastrocystis would see that there is no sac. All right, no sac. And here you can see the intestines, liver and other organs remain outside of the abdomen in a sac. So this is the sac where you can see this omphalocele. Remember I said this is, this is more common in case of females and it is also associated with any heart families. All right. And this is more in case of females. So all this was discussed and of course you can see the sac. And what about this one? This is para-umbilical. See here, this is para-umbilical. It is on the right. And this one is central. All right. So that is the difference between the omphalocele and gastrocystis. All right. Let's go to the next one and see here. <clears throat> this is the pathophysiology of the Meckel's diverticulum. What can you see here? Most common congenital anomaly of the GI tract is 2% of population you can see. All right. So now this one remnant of the vital, vital intestinal duct that is omphalomesentric duct. It connects actually the yolk sac. You can see the yolk sac with the primitive midgut. So here there is a connection and this one is supposed to, you know, get obliterated between 8th and 10th week of gestation. But it remains, it doesn't get obliterated. And they may sometimes remain as a fibrous band. All right, that may connect the Meckel's diverticulum to the umbilicus. And this one is, again, if it remains, this is how it would look like an extension. And that is called Meckel's diverticulum. All right, so let's see here. This is the one. Rule of two, if you remember, it is seen in 2% of the population. And you can see it is case of male and female ratio. If you go to, you can see this is more common in case of male than in female. Okay, this is more common in case of male. And then there is also another rule of two, if you apply two feet from the ileocecal valve. So there is ileocecal valve. See here, this is the one and it is two feet away from the ileocecal valve. So this could be the point. Then it is about two inches long. And also there are 2%, you know, develop complications. There are 2% of population who can develop, you know, certain complications with this. So they may also have intestinal disturbances and they may also have, uh, you know, other <clears throat> gastro GIT irritations. And 50% before the age of 2 will show such symptoms if there is any. And there are two types of heterotropic mucosa that is present, gastric and pancreatic. So that is also involved. So rule of 2, if you apply, this is what you can apply when it comes to all this. So out of all this, what is important is, it is again 2 feet from the ileocecal valve. That is a location that is very, very important. Right, next one, let's go to some things that we can um, identify here is lesser sac and greater sac. Can you see the lesser sac, greater sac? All right. <clears throat> okay, one second. All right. So here there is lesser sac and greater sac. So where is the lesser sac? This is the lesser omentum. This is the lesser omentum. And you can see that it is attached to the liver and it is from the lesser curvature of the stomach. And you can also see the stomach which is lesser and greater curvature. You can also see the fold that is hanging down 
is a double layer fold. You can see it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall as well. And it is not just attached to the transverse colon, but it is also attached to the posterior abdominal wall. And it also encloses all those other structures. You, you can see it also has connections with the pancreas and also some of the dysentery. So this is the greater omentum, all right? So that hangs down like a sleeve from the greater curvature of the stomach and it protects all the structures that are within. So now when it hangs down there, there is a big you know, gap that is formed and that is called the greater omentum. So there is the greater sac that is called. So there is greater sac and lesser sac. So here you can see the lesser sac. All right. So this is the space where it is called the lesser sac. Right. So that is the lesser sac. Now let's go to the picture where you can even appreciate the things even more um, neatly. So there is this lesser sac that communicates with the uh, you know, uh, the greater sac through a small foramen called the epiploic foramen. So this is the one. This is the epiploic foramen. The greater and the lesser sac can communicate with each other through this small opening called the epiploic foramen. So now here, lesser sac is also called omental bursa. So you have to remember the other name because always whenever we, you know, practice something or whenever we study something, we try to remember the names that are easy. But sometimes there could be, uh, you know, it could be addressed completely with a different name. That is when we just bump into things and we'll be like stuck. So you have to remember the other name for this is omental bursa. So it is part of the peritoneal cavity. It is behind the stomach. All right. It is behind the stomach and boundaries of the omental bursa. If you see, it has anterior wall and it has posterior wall. All right. You can see the anterior wall. And the posterior wall. So anterior wall is, you can see it hangs down from the caudate lobe here. And then it is, you know, uh, also going through this omentum that is called the lesser omentum. And then it goes to the backside of the stomach. And then anterior two layers of the greater omentum also. So these are the boundaries of the lesser sac. All right, so what are the boundaries? Remember, caudate lobe. Many a times this is asked, lesser sac is related to which lobe? Caudate or the quadrate lobe. So many of the people think that it's liver as a whole. It is not liver as a whole. It is the caudate lobe that is related to. So this one question I myself have uh, bumped into it so many times during my, you know, um, whenever I, you know, make, PPTs or uh, MCQs, I have bumped into this question so many times. So, caudate lobe it is, so remember that. And then you can see posterior wall is this one. So, posterior wall has all this from below upwards, you can see. You can see two layers of the greater omentum here, right? And you can see the transverse colon and you can see the ascending layer here, that is of the mesocolon, transverse mesocolon and you can see it goes up Words. And you can also see that it encloses the suprarenal gland. Okay, suprarenal gland it encloses. And you can also see the left kidney there. So this is what you can identify as the posterior wall of the lesser sac. So these are the structures you must remember for the posterior wall as the boundary. And these are the structures for the anterior wall. So in the anterior wall, may very important question is caudate lobe. So always lobe soch te ki wo liver as a whole hai. But no, it is the caudate lobe wo aapko ye differentiate karna padta hai. Caudate lobe kaun sa hai? Quadrate lobe kaun sa hai? Quadrate lobe is the one which is below. Caudate is the one which is above. Okay, caudate is above. This is the one which is above. So this is what is related, not the one which is below. All right, next one. Let's see if there is any student who has any questions. <clears throat> Aditya has always been my very good student and he tries to, you know, um, give the answers very quickly. Very nice, Aditya. I'm really proud of you. So it is nice that you have, uh, you know, very good interest and also very good grasping power so that you can answer the questions easily. All right. Next one is DAF from opening. 
Okay, we'll come to the nutcracker syndrome also. Diaphragm openings. So diaphragm openings and defects, if you remember, diaphragm has three major openings. All right, three major openings. And there are minor openings as well. There are a lot of defects also when it comes to the you know, diaphragm. So there are posterior lateral defects that is called boxtelic hernia. So this is posterior lateral wall defect. Okay, remember this. And more of this we will again discuss in our uh, classes when we do this uh, special classes. We are going to discuss more of this. So you have to just attend my special classes to know more on this. And some of them are taken on the special classes and most of them are taken on the plus classes. So if you are a person who has already subscribed, then you would be getting the maximum out of it because the plus classes gives you the 100% you know, coverage in the curriculum. So you attend the plus classes and before attending, if you want to have a glimpse of how it feels, then you please attend my special classes. Special classes are held every single day. So you can look forward for my classes tomorrow. That is right in the morning till the evening. You have about three to four special classes. You can attend any one of them. So before attending those classes, I urge you to just download the app so that you have the app ready. And then you have to just, you know, register yourself using my code. What is my code? That is Roini10. Okay, this code holds good. Not just for your special free classes, but you are also going to uh, use the code in case you are going for paid subscription classes in the plus. So plus classes and iconic classes are the paid classes, but believe me, it is just worth it because you are going to get complete curriculum. All right. And then we have the pancreas anomalies. So anomalies of the pancreas, we have to know all those anomalies of the pancreas. Plus, you also should know the development of pancreas. What is the development, Aditya, you remember? There is a dorsal bud, there is a ventral bud. Dorsal bud, ventral bud. So which one gives rise to? Uncinate process is most, you know, frequently asked question. Uncinate process. Uncinate process develops from which one? Okay, is it the dorsal bud or the ventral bud? So, there is this always this question. It develops from the ventral bud. Yeah. So, that is a question that is asked. Next, we have the openings in the diaphragm. So, remember there is a major opening, major openings. And you can also see there is this epigastric vessel, superior epigastric vessels. Right in the center, there is a foramen morgagni. And you can also see the, you know, origin of the muscles. You can see some from the sternal side, some from the coastal side, and some from the vertebral side. All these are going to converge in the center, forming a central tendon. So that is the insertion. And insertion in the central tendon, what you can see, this is what you can see. That is the inferior vena cava opening is present in the central tendon. So IV vena cava opening. Okay, that is at the level of G8. This is what you can see. All right. Yeah. Next, you can also see there is aortic opening, azygous, and thoracic. These three are together. So these three are together, that is at the A level of T12. And you can also see the greater and lesser splanchnic. These are all in the crust, right and left crust. So these are minor openings. And you can also see there is a arcuate, median and lateral arcuate ligaments. And there is crust of the diaphragm. And you can also see how neatly the sympathetic chain is related. So these are the openings. You can see what is the shape. It is quadrilateral in shape. It is elliptical and it is rounded. Okay, just like aorta, aortic opening is also very much rounded. So now here, there is effect on contraction, constriction, dilation, and structures passing through all these is very neatly given. What you have to remember is with inferior vena cava, you have the right free neck, not the left right. 
and with esophagus you have the vagal trunks both of them are present with the esophagus so please remember that and then you know you can answer the question if it comes like which opening you know are present in the diaphragm easily you can write <clears throat> Okay, so now here, next one is the spermatic cord and its contents. Okay, so here we have the spermatic cord and its contents. That is very, very important question. So we have three arteries, three nerves and remember three veins. So you have to remember three arteries. That is, this is like rule of three. So there is testicular artery, cremastric artery, artery of ductus deferens. Then you have three nerves. Which are the three nerves? You have the genital branch of genitofemoral. Then you have plexus of sympathetic around this ductus uh, deferens artery. And then you have also the visceral afferent nerve fibers. So these are the three nerves. And of course, lot of pampini form plexus of veins and ductus difference itself. Then lymph vessels coming from the testis. Then all the processes vaginalis remaining, so you can see. And spermatic cord runs from the deep in vinyl ring that is, you know, way little higher. And it passes through the superficial ring out into the sac. So now there are coverings on the spermatic cord. You have three coverings. This is also again three. You have internal spermatic fascia. This is very important. Please remember all this very carefully. So all those who are watching who are going to take the exam very soon. You have to remember the coverings of the spermatic fascia very, very clearly. So you have the from within outwards. Okay. You have the first one internal spermatic fascia. It is derived from which one? It is derived from the fascia transversalis. It is derivative of which one is very, very important. Okay. So now it covers the cord to its whole extent. Next one, cremastric fascia. It is derived from the internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle. Next one. And it covers what? It covers below the level of all these muscles. Spermatic fascia. Next, the external spermatic fascia. It is again going with the name. So you remember, external oblique aponeurosis gives rise to this. And here, covers the cord below the superficial inguinal ring. Okay, below the superficial inguinal ring. So you have to remember this very, very clearly. So how you want to remember? First one, internal spermatic fascia that is derived from the fascia transversalis because the innermost one is fascia transversalis. So you remember it that way and it covers its entire length. It's the innermost one, that's why. Then cremastric fascia is this, the from, you know, from within outwards, it is the second one. It is from internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscles. And the outermost one obviously will be the external spermatic fascia derived from the outermost muscle that is external oblique aponeurosis. All right. So this is what covers it, you know, below the spermatic cord. All right. So here if you see, there is one word that, you know, always keeps attracting the examiners. And this is what they ask you. How is the conjoint tendon formed? How is it formed? Yes, Aditya. Aditya says um, testicular, you know, is a branch of abdominal aorta. We'll come to the abdominal aorta branches. So I have a slide where I have put up abdominal aorta branches. So all the branches of abdominal aorta, the anterior branches, lateral branches and posterior branches we will discuss. Okay. And um, yeah, cremastric is a branch of external iliac. Yes. And artery to vast difference is branch from superior vesicular artery. Correct. All right. So here we have the deep inguinal ring. This is the deep inguinal ring. And we have the superficial inguinal ring here. 
So you can see that how it, you know, enters from the deep to the superficial inguinal ring. So remember, from deep to superficial inguinal ring, the one thing that is, you know, below the conjoint tendon. You remember this one? So this below that, you can see this outermost one that is called the cremastric fascia. It is cremastric fascia is below the conjoint tendon. You can see that. So here it is. It starts from here. And you can see that conjoint tendon is formed by both this transverse abdominis and the internal oblique muscle. So this one is formed by the outermost one that is called the external spermatic fascia. It is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. So here external oblique muscle gives rise to the external spermatic fascia. Now all these are the contents and you can see this is the superficial inguinal ring. And below the superficial inguinal ring is what you can see the external spermatic fascia. Below the conjoint tendon is what you can see the cremastric fascia. So above that what you can see, you can see only the this layer that is called internal spermatic fascia. So internal spermatic fascia is nothing but derived from the fascia transversalis. I hope this is very clear. This is this one conjoint tendon. How is it formed? Conjoint tendon is formed by this one and external spermatic fascia is actually you know, formed because of this one. I hope I didn't, you know, spoil the diagram. It was a nice diagram and it is how you can remember the things. All right, next come to abdominal aorta and its branches. So you should know the abdominal aorta. Aorta, pardon, some of the spellings is missed up. Abdominal aorta, um, you know, it starts in at the level of T12 and goes on up to the level of L1, where it divides again into two branches that is called common iliac. So there is a right common iliac, left common iliac, okay? Right and left common iliac. So here, what are the branches it gives during its you know, course is what is important. And uh, peritoneal anatomy will go to next after that. So here it is, the T12 level. And you can see there is first important branch is the celiac trunk. Okay, just above the celiac trunk, you see the inferior phrenic artery which supplies the diaphragm. Underside of the diaphragm is supplied by inferior phrenic. All right. Then you can see there are the anterior branches. Superior mesenteric is anterior. I'm going to circle it. Then you have another anterior inferior mesenteric. All right. And there is another one, median sacral. These are the branches which are present anteriorly. So let me just change the color of the pen. So let's see what else we have. We have the lateral branches. A lot of them are the lateral branches. You can see there is suprarenal, right and left suprarenals are there. Then of course we have inferior phrenic arteries are there then we have uh, all those small lumbar arteries are there and other than that we also have the renal artery right and left renal arteries very important branch from the iota so we also have this testicular arteries okay testicular arteries right and left testicular and ovarian arteries these are the branches that you can see as the, you know, lateral branches. Right, always the sacral and lumbar are considered to be the posterior branches. Sacral and lumbar are considered to be the posterior ones. All right, so remember these are the branches that you can see and you see that it divides into the uh, to the common iliacs. There is the right and left common iliac. And then that again divides once it crosses the inguinal ligament, the external iliac would come into form the femoral artery. 
and there are various branches from internal iliac also we'll talk about the branches from the internal iliac but this one is external iliac and this is internal iliac and you can see the femoral all right next one spermatic cord spermatic cord we talked about spermatic cord we talked about the inguinal canal and we also know that femoral triangle is present right below the you know uh, the inguinal uh, ligament but femoral triangle we can discuss when we discuss the lower limb all right so when we come to the lower limb, we'll discuss about the femoral triangle. And femoral ring we can talk about. And we also discussed about the Hasselbach's triangle. Do you remember the Hasselbach's triangle, Aditya? Yes, Dunbar syndrome. Yes, I'll mention that also. Dunbar syndrome. Yes, we can discuss all this in our special class, okay? We will have a lot of discussion in the special and the plus classes because we have limited things here. We cannot, uh, you know, we go with a lot of explanation. We will have, this is like a glimpse of what you can get in the plus and, uh, you know, special classes. So, Dunbar syndrome is definitely an important condition where celiac trunk, celiac trunk is compressed. by the left crust of diaphragm very nice very nice information yes this is called the Danbert syndrome where i will put up some pictures for you and you can see all this in the uh, group as well okay all right so this is the hasselback triangle hasselback triangle is very important because of this direct inguinal hernia direct inguinal hernia remember this hasselback triangle and the boundaries, you can remember it as rib. You have the rectus abdominis muscle lateral border. You have the inferior epigastric vessel. And then you have poppet ligament on one side. So that triangle, you, you can remember it as like this. All right. So these are the boundaries. Next one, segments of the liver is also important. Yes. Segments of liver are very important and you should also remember Coinard classification, Callot strangle, all right. We cannot cover whole lot here, but yeah, definitely we can do more of all this in the special classes. So please do attend all the special classes so that you can extract maximum out of what can come for the abdomen topics. So here we have Hartman pouch. Have you noted all this down? This is important, like uh, Aditya also mentioned some of the things, poppet ligament. Poppet ligament is inguinal ligament, okay? Is it the same thing? Yes, it is the same thing. It is the same thing, poppet ligament and inguinal ligament is same. Next, we have Pringles manua, small intestine versus large intestine, okay? This is again, come when it comes to such things, it is always histology. Histological features, you have to remember, it's always compare and contrast. So if you have two things like, for example, uh, lymphatic system and uh, in the lymphatic system, you know, we have all these four things. We have the tonsil, we have thymus, we have a uh, lymph node, correct? And then we have spleen. You should always try and you know, understand this by comparing and contrasting the features of the histology, from the histology. So if you do that, then it will be easy for you to understand the difference. The histological changes that happens in these uh, organs, you can easily note down. If you study them as a separate, uh, you know, topic, then, it, then it's going to be a waste. So histology, you should always try to compare and study. And uh, same thing happens when you study the spongy bone and uh, compact bone. So please try to compare and contrast the features. Okay. Yes, lacunar ligament is lacunar ligament is called Imbernard's ligament. Yes. 
nutcracker syndrome this is what he was talking about so nutcracker syndrome you were talking about nutcracker that is also very important and uh, see such things are very important Okay, kidney, anterior and posterior relations, nutcracker syndrome. Here you have to remember which one, the left side or the right side, the left renal vein. Okay, renal vein, left side. Then stomach bed, all those relations on the posterior aspect of stomach bed. There are various structures. When it comes to spleen, you remember splenic vein is not a posterior aspect. It is on the anterior aspect of the stomach. So it is not a part of the stomach bed. Splenic vein is not related to stomach bed. Because why it contributes to the what it contributes to? It contributes to the portal vein formation. That's why. Right, Aditya? Next one, inferior mesenteric artery. We have inferior mesenteric artery and uh, we just saw that inferior mesenteric artery, right? We saw the superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. These are all the branches from the abdominal aorta. So, inferior mesenteric separately you can study. Superior mesenteric is related to pancreas. Okay. So, how it is related to pancreas, you must know superior mesenteric and the relation of the superior mesenteric with the pancreas, you have to understand with the picture, with that good diagram. And then comes the Sudex point. This is also very important. Griffith point, very important. Please note down all these things. Yes, that is the recto sigmoidal junction is called Sudex point. This recto sigmoidal junction, let me just write it down. It's called the Sudex point and you also please remember the Griffith point and, and we also have, you know, um, We have uh, so many other structures. We have about uh, liver. In the liver, you have to know the ligaments. Ligaments are very important. What ligaments are present in the liver? This is something that is uh, you know not mentioned, but it is very, very important. What ligaments from the liver we have to know? Anyone? You have to know about the falciform ligament. You have to know the ligamentum teres. Okay, right and left coronary ligaments. Right and left coronary ligaments and what else? Anybody? Anybody knows what else we have? Falciform, ligamentum teres, coronary ligaments and triangular ligaments. So these are the ligaments that you must remember liver all right and in the spleen you have two ligaments gastro splenic and lino-renal why this lino-renal is very important what passes through this ligament Lino-renal is very important. Why it is very important? Lino-renal is very important because the splenic artery passes through the lino-renal ligament to reach the splenic artery and the vein, both of the, the splenic vessels to reach the spleen. All right. So all this is really, really important. So now let's have a look at that we have to run actually. All right. So what is that we have next? We have some important things that we have to always tell you because this is something that is uh, very, very important. And we 
you know, always urge students to, you know, get maximum out of an academy because we want everyone to subscribe and get the maximum benefit because all these are kind of demo classes and you will not get the 100% out of this because of the obvious reasons. So here we have um, an academy with full, you know, um, curriculum in the plus and the iconic subscription. So go ahead and get this subscriptions. You can also use my code. My code is Rohini10, wherein you can get the 10% discount also. So I'm Dr. Roini and I have my credentials here written and you can also follow me on my profile. And this is how my profile looks like with all those hats dedicated by my favorite students. And um, these students have been uh, the backbone for all the, you know, um, importance that we get as the educators. And also these uh, number of followers also depicts the kind of attention and kind of, you know, uh, tracking they do because they just want to have the good kind of uh, you know education and uh, good kind of videos that they want to watch so when they want to watch they first of all they have to follow the educator so that they have a track of what classes we are taking so once you start following us you will automatically start liking the subject because you are going to be more involved so this is how you can get more involved you can watch all my special classes by downloading the app, Learners app, and you can also see that some point you may just bump into where you have to click on this notify me and then you will get a pop-up window wherein you enter the unlock code that is Rohini10 and you unlock the classes and then you definitely have an access to all my classes in the special class as well. So today we were talking about all those important structures and the topics from the abdomen section. And here, have you all written this exam? Did you all get any scores or ranks? So let me know what you got. If you happen to have the code used, please let me know. This is the code I had given. Did you get to use the code? And if you use the code and got a rank, let me know. And here is plus subscription and we also have similarly iconic subscription. These subscriptions are really, really important. Okay. These subscriptions are really, really important. Why? Because you want to have a full curriculum in hand. Definitely subscriptions are important. Here you can access both the live classes, recorded classes, and you can also get, you know, all these printed notes with 12 month subscription. And you can also access all this question bank series. Okay. And we have so many students who have messaged and uh, all right. So here is the iconic subscription with the Un Academy as well as the prep ladder. And exam day is always nice because you have on 17th October Sunday and here on Sunday, did you write this exam 10 to 1 and 2 to 5? So this is again on the you know, uh, Sunday it was taken and you must have checked how well you have done and how much assessment you can get you could have got. And this was for FMG students and INCT. So like this we keep assessing our students and uh, getting to know them from close. And these are the features of the special class. So when you attend special class you will feel that it is interactive. If the polls are there for the learners and also you have uh, you no know, features like raise the hand. You'll never miss a class. Why? Because you'll always get the notification. Once you get the notification, you are motivated to attend the class, especially if it is your favorite subject, right? Then you'll also get the lecture notes at the end of the class in the form. Yeah. And anytime, anywhere you can access all this. There is no restrictions as such. And always you remember effective QBank practice practice sessions are always upgraded and it is there with the latest exam pattern okay so you can get all this with the subscription and you can also see that you have a raise a hand feature and so many clinical case discussions instrument, instruments patch etc we always congratulate all the stoppers who have uh, scored such high scores on 800 some of them have got crossed even 650 690 etc so you want to be one amongst them. You can be with the focus. Don't move from your focus. 
So this is the batches that started on 6th and it is going to go on for a long time, like 2 months batch, 2 months, 3 months, 1 month. So you can see what fits in your curriculum. You can go join for that. This is for the ones who want to go with the EMI option. So you too have that and uh, EMI is as low as 1,500 1, and um, or even less than that for plus and iconics. There is slight difference in the price as well, but you have to use the code. So whenever you go with the subscription, you always use the code and uh, get the subscription. All right. And you please remember, and this is a six month subscription is minimum to access or get, you know, uh, um, you know um, okay to the subscription through EMI. All right. So with all these things, I hope you'll all subscribe and enjoy the unlimited access to all the stuff that we have at An Academy. I'm Dr. Roini and your educator at Anatomy. Thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow in the morning. Good night.